My pleasure to introduce Dinesh Keskar. He is the president of Boeing India. Dinesh, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. Off the bat, I want to start with the overall aerospace or air industry scene in general, because um, it is facing crunch yeah. with everybody else, I guess. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's a lot more severe when you take the dollar numbers. True. But let me tell you, first of all, you are correct, in the, and I totally agree with you that the world is in difficulty right now in the civil aviation side, and India is no exception. However, India also is in a better position because we are one of the few countries in the world where GDP is actually positive. Secondly, Indian aviation was in infancy for the first 50 years and now it has grown leaps and bounds. I will give you a statistics. In uh, four years ago, there were only 125 jet aircraft for commercial service in India. Today we have three times that many. No country can say we tripled our fleet in a span of four years. Okay. But along with that also comes the problems. What happened with that unbelievable growth came the unfortunate global recession. So India domestically was not affected as much, but India affected globally, meaning people going from US to India, even for visiting friends and relatives. If you think your job is in risk, you're not going to spend tickets for a family of four and go there. Similarly, business people are cutting it down, and that's why India is affected. Domestic India is doing reasonably well, but the problem of domestic India is everybody added so many airplanes that we got too much capacity. Just five years ago, there were only 28 flights a week from India to London. Today we have 128 flights from India to London, all with big airplanes. Domestically, look at Mumbai, Delhi. I remember the days in early 90s when you had four flights a day. Now we have 40 flights a day, okay? Which gives consumer a choice, but you don't have that much demand. And so in the past, demand was artificially created by ridiculously low fares, which don't make money for the airlines. And that is why today airlines in India last year lost over a billion dollars together. However, I will tell you that when March of this year, next year comes, that loss will be a lot less because airlines have understood this problem. They are consciously returning airplanes of leased airplanes. They are trying to maintain a discipline in how many airplanes to bring. They are doing everything that they can do to cut the cost and thereby I would project that by June, July next year we will have a break even in the civil aviation industry. And our prediction at Boeing is that in the next 20 years, India will need about 1,000 airplanes worth about $100 billion. So huge market in the commercial side. I want to switch gears to uh, the military aspect okay. of it. Even more exciting. <laughs> Even more exciting, yes. So uh, just as there is a demand for uh, civil aviation, right. there is tremendous demand for uh, you know, the military uh, uh, aircraft and, and other things that come Absolutely. with it. Uh, how are you uh, aligning yourself to address that particular market in, in, in Asia especially? So, you know, I'll tell you, it's unfortunate but true. For a long time, there was no military relationship between India and U.S. It was all between Russia and India. It's only in the last five years there has been a dialogue, and only after the U.S. civil nuclear deal was signed with big fanfare, there is now a real discussion about products and technology transfer. I will be glad to tell you that we already have done a first major sale in military to India called P8I which is a military reconnaissance airplane which will fly over India and see at the, at the waters of India what is going on. Unfortunately, what happened on the 26th of November of last year has changed people's thinking and the need. And as you know, the new government, the UPA2 that's come in the power, has clearly said that citizen security and safety is of paramount importance and they're going to spend money to do that. So because of that, defense market is even bigger. And our prediction is that market in the next 10 years is around 31 billion US dollars. So pretty good size market, both civil and the defense side. Um, there's also a challenge when you look at the defense industry. Yeah. Uh, as, as a company, you, you're not just dealing with India, you're dealing with a host of other countries Absolutely. in the region. Absolutely. How do you, as a company, handle such situations where there's not always friendship, so to say. No, no, I agree. So 
this is where the art comes into play. This is not a science. This is not a two plus two equals four business, okay? You have to manage political relationships. As I mentioned to you, if U.S.-India relationship is not on a strong foundation, this will not go anywhere, no matter how good is our product. Uh, we are delighted that the first state visit to Obama White House is going to be Prime Minister Singh. And, and these are the kind of relationships that will help U.S. companies, not just Boeing, but all U.S. companies to do better in the defense side of India. Commercially, they have done well because while political equations are important, uh, airlines tend to get the best product because they are competing with the Singapore Airlines and the Cathay and all those things. So you have to manage. I know you are alluding to the P word and the C word along, along India, and that's always a challenge. And we have no military relationship with China, and we have some with Pakistan, and we have to work in it, and we are very honest and straightforward with what we do. And let me tell you, in the defense side of it, it's really done by the government. We cannot do anything with the government of India in terms of defense cells unless the government of the United States agrees to do so. And this is why when Secretary Clinton was there recently in July, there was a agreement on the end user monitoring which is required by the U.S. government. So all those things are now moving in the right direction. I want to now come back to the actual research and development potential in India because we are at a unique conference of IIT alumni, you Absolutely. Know, great brains, intelligent people. Yep. And there are tons of resources yep. in India. Yep. How do you expect to leverage those resources? Great question. In fact, uh, we opened a research center, only the third one outside of the United States, in Bangalore on March 31st. And what our model there is collaboration and partnership. We have 15 PhDs, many from IITs and many from other places of India, but we are working with IIT Kanpur, IIT Delhi, IIT Mumbai, IIT Kharagpur, and we are doing research with the students to stimulate the young minds at the fourth year and the postgraduate level. We are working with NAL, and we are also working with companies in India like the HCL and Wipro and all, what we're trying to do is tap the industry, the academia, both, and the government labs, you know, DRDO, NAL, right. those kinds of labs, and we're doing some great examples. Uh, I'll just mention a couple for your viewers. One is, you know, when you are in a factory, uh, you always look for tools. You know, our factory in uh, Seattle is 96 acres under one single roof. It's in the Guinness Book of World Record. And you sometimes wonder, where is my this tool or where are those parts and everything. So now we are doing RFID on all these tools and everything. And what we are seeing is if you go on the computer and you want to know where a particular tool was last time, you can just go log in and see where it is. The second advantage we found, which is the research being done with IIT, IITNs, I should say, is when we go assemble an airplane, there are certain parts required. And if one is missing, the assembly comes to an halt, which is a very expensive way to do any work. So what we do now, again with the RFID, before the job and the airplane comes there, everybody knows whether all the parts you need are there or not. And RFID will give you all that information. This is not implemented. This is in the research stage with IITs, and that's really one very good thing. Another thing we are looking at is when you have an earthquake or a hazardous spill, you can send people there because their lives can be at risk, not knowing how solid the ground is or what kind of spill is going on. IIT folks were recently in, our, in my office. They demonstrated a vehicle which will go in all-terrain remote control with a signal capability with the GSM technology and will relay pictures and information back and everything. So. These are very early stages. These are not something we got on the airplane, but that's how the research starts. And so we find that in India, we can get research done very easily, number one, which is important because the resources are there, cost is acceptable, and finally, the talent is abundant. And that's why we open this research center, and I'm expecting great gains out of this in the next few years. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and experiences. Thank I appreciate you very the much, time. Mateen.